One of the biggest complaints that people have about USB microphones, including myself, is that you don't really get all that much control over it, whether it is to switch just the audio over an EQ or maybe just doing other things on the fly and things like that. However, right here I've actually got two audio interfaces, and these audio interfaces are specifically for USB microphones, and I actually wanted to see how, how effective they would be. And with that said, introducing the PC Panel Mini and the PC Panel Pro. I'm going to be reviewing both of these today, so let's go ahead and dive right on. Before we continue, don't forget that I have a Twitch channel that you can go ahead and follow me on for live microphone reviews and much more than that. But you're also going to find my Instagram and a link to the text on the Discord in the description. So come join the community because it is a pretty cool one. We've also opened up a Patreon as of late where if you join, you'll be automatically entered to win one tech gadget every month in our exclusive giveaways. Details to that are going to be down below. Don't forget to check out the description for everything. Now let's get right into the video. So let's begin with an unboxing. Now there are going to be two boxes to open, obviously, but they are both very simple and basic looking boxes, which once opened, will reveal both interfaces and the USB-C cables, which are braided to get these to work with your system. The exterior design of both of these is going to be pretty much identical. They both feature thick aluminum for the corners, which happens to be the majority of the body anyway, and the face portions are made of this glossy material that feels pretty sturdy, with the back panels on each one of these being comprised of this much harder matte material per se. And now the Pro model over here is going to feature five knobs that are labeled from K1 to K5 in order to try and avoid naming any kind of illicit substances and we're also going to get four faders over here and all of these are going to be customizable and the mini model over here is only going to feature four high volume knobs and these are labeled as such and now the knobs and the faders on all of these are comprised of metal and honestly they're very nice and smooth to use all together but what i really like about these is just how they have rgb lighting i mean who can possibly complain about that it's lighting which is customizable customizable through PC Panel's own software, and the Pro actually looks like a GoXLR Mini in a sense, and the Mini still looks pretty clean as it is with this kind of lighting on it. Both of these units are really well built, and I think that a lot of people are going to be very happy with the construction on these and the use of the, the materials overall. Now let's go ahead and talk about the software at hand. It is going to be very simple and, and easy to work your way around it. Like for example, how the software is just going to show you how whatever product you have connected to it. And the Pro model in particular is going to be the one that I'm going to demo this entire software with and customize exactly what the knobs end up doing. And you can actually press down on these to treat them as actual buttons, which I think is pretty cool. And you can do things like, like open software software and much more like you can adjust in order to change uh, the volume of certain applications like Spotify volume, YouTube volume, microphone volume, all of these things are possible and I think that four faders is actually a great number or the perfect number if anything. You can also go ahead and set the knobs like I like to mute things as soon as you press down on them and even going as far as muting your entire device through just a single knob. I think that this device is capable of quite a bit and I think that there are ways of making this even better and I will talk about that very soon. Now with the mini you pretty much only get the knobs functionality that you would get with the pro model which is great and if you only are interested in saving a little bit of money going for the smaller model like in case you really only need knobs then hey i mean this is going to be a very good option as well like you can do things such as adjusting the volume of different apps and things like that which is going to be totally fine this and this is also going to be rgb lit that it's going to be fully customizable on both of these however you want it however i really like this initial setting for it so i tend to just I yeah, just stick with that. I kind of like that chroma aesthetic to it. So when it comes to the functionality, I want to give you an example of how I use the Pro model specifically. So S1 on the faders is going to control uh, my microphone volume, while S2 is just going to control my Spotify volume, and things like S3 is going to be in charge of my headphone volume, and S4 is in charge of my general output volume. And now things like these knobs over here are going to be used for a variety of 
different thing, uh, such as being able uh, to press down on them and then open up Streamlabs OBS, opening Twitch uh, for another one of them, and opening Spotify, and the rest are just assigned to games uh, that I would probably end up streaming, such as Final Fantasy XIV online and things like that. Uh, but that's really all that I've got, and I've actually got some suggestions for making this a much better product. So both of these devices are very great, and they offer quite a bit of utility, but I think that they still are capable of a lot more. There is just a ton of potential here that hasn't really been, have been tapped into in, the, in order to make these proper replacements for the GoXLR and the Stream Deck, even though they did take a couple of steps in order to go in that direction. I wanted to talk about some of those things that I believe these are missing in order to make these an even better product and a much stronger competitor to the GoXLR and the Stream Deck and the live streamer Nexus by Evermedia and so on. So you can't make any of the buttons here play any kind of sound effect, which is indeed unfortunate. Like you can't just go ahead and, and add them in. And another big deal is, is that you can't exactly put any transitions for your streams and your overlay at all. Unless you you go ahead and do it through macros, which is just going to be a much more complicated way of taking care of things. You also can't switch cameras with this whatsoever if you have a multi-camera setup like I do, which is indeed unfortunate. And there's also one issue in particular that I have with the Mini, and it's that the rubber feet are actually too slippery. It's mostly fine if you're twisting the knobs, but you can't really press any of the buttons while it's like this unless you have something to hold it sturdy, which will mean yet another investment. So I don't really like the Mini, uh, the Mini quite as much because uh, the Pro already, already takes care of that issue for me. So right now there is some lost potential with these and the Mini does have a stability issue that needs to be addressed. But truth be told, both of these are really good interfaces. And if you don't need much in particular, these are going to be great. If you just want controls and some minor shortcuts, then the Pro is going to be a great product that I'm very comfortable sticking with. Hell, even if you don't need all of those buttons and faders, then the Mini will give you a ton of utility as long as you can keep it in place. Now, both of these are going to be a great USB audio interfaces, and I'm very happy recommending them, both actually even though they are flawed in their own way. Now let's hope that PC panel adds more practicality for streamers because all of my complaints at the very least for the pro model have been software based. So yeah, I encourage you to consider these if you don't want to go the XLR route quite yet or have less demanding needs per se. And if you're interested in either one of these products, then I will be making sure to leave links to their website down in the description. Now, these are not going to be affiliated whatsoever. It's just to make it a little bit easier to help you find them. And I also wanted to go ahead and thank all of our patrons, uh, beginning with the tier threes. And those are going to be Joe Moss, Omar, and Saad Alvazal. Thank you so much for all of your support because it really does go a very long way. And now onto the tier two patrons coming right up. And this is super important. I would just like to give a very special thanks to all of our patrons which are going to be listed right here on the screen again a massive thanks to you all for supporting us to help us create the kind of content that we bring to you on a day-to-day -day basis and thank you so much for supporting at the tech summit podcast as well and just remember that if you would like to be a part of this community too and then do make sure to check out the links to our patreon where you don't only get bonus episodes of our podcast but you also get automatically entered into one of our monthly giveaways of a tech product that we have reviewed that is of at least $50 in value or higher. So I'll link to that down below. And don't forget to follow me on the rest of my social media, such as my, my Instagram and my Twitch, where I do stream fairly often. Now, with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching, and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy. Okay.